Okay. All right. So what should we look at today? Well, um, the main thing is this, this, okay. It's about the high register and the tension in these parts of my body that build mm -hmm. up when I go up. Mm -hmm. how, how do I avoid them? Because okay. I think they're constraining my sound. All right. Um, okay. Uh, how uncomfortable is it? Um, how unbearable? It is not uncomfortable, really. It is. It's just limiting. It feels like it limits my I my know. freedom to go up. Okay. All right. So then, let's see what's going on. Can you sit a little further away from the camera? Sure. Um. Do you do better like this? No. Sure. Oh, well. Yeah, that's better. Well, I, I, I think your high register is getting much better. Yes, it is. I know. Yeah. I've been working a lot, so it's getting better. But yeah. I still felt like at the at the end of the high C, like this was going like puff. Yeah. That's not tension. That's pressure. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, that's caused by the, uh, a lot of air getting exhaled, but not getting, not leaking. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the pressure of the air itself. So it's not directly caused by your muscles. Yeah. And it's something necessary. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, what, what, what's your thought on that? Well, I don't know. I've been told always that, that when I play the high register, I should be relaxed. Mm -hmm. That's, they, um, they usually say that that's the only way to, to develop a nice sounding, um, not, not, not constrained high register. Hmm. Not forced. Yeah. Um, I think, well, <laughs> there's some mix up there. So we, we will have to define what's tension and what what relax relaxing means. Yeah. Um, I think we can both agree on what's a good sound. Yes. Yeah. And I think most um, horn players can agree on that more or less. Um, I'm wondering if when people are telling you to relax, is that because they actually see something that you're doing or is it something that they are um, hearing in your sound? Um, sometimes or it's clear, um, but sometimes it's only visible in my body. But only I think it, it does transmit in my, in my sound. Look, for example, I've been told recently that I use a lot of strength in my arm mm -hmm. I try to go up. Mm -hmm. And many people have told me that. So, and I do notice that when I, for example, 
don't use this finger. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier playing the high register. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less of a, less, less force used. Yeah. Um, as a Alexander Technique teacher, we are probably a little more trained to really look at what's actually going on. Yes. The, the more um, like we are trained to observe actual movements, it gets more difficult to understand what people are saying about movements. Yeah. Because it just doesn't look like that to our eyes. Okay. But um, what you just said, that the fact that when you have your little finger away from the hook, it feels easier. That's probably, there's probably some truth in that. So um, if I could see you doing playing both ways. Yeah. Then maybe I can um, kind of bridge the difference between the two different ways you play. Okay. Okay. Um, it's going to sound very counterintuitive, yeah. but actually you're pre pressing more when you're not having your finger, a uh, little finger. Yes, I, uh -huh. I think when I don't have it, my, the, the rest of my hand tries to, to. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're actually holding the horn with more firmly. Because, so your hand kind of, without the little finger on the hook, your hand slips a little more towards your mouth, and the angle changes a little bit. The angle of the mouth to your mouth. Yeah. Probably for some reason, that configuration is easier for you to play. Okay. I don't think... I think it's actually more the reverse, that you're actually applying more pressure when you're not using your uh, little finger. You're trying to compensate. Yeah, so if that's true, now we can try with the little finger on the hook, but you can deliberately um, press and kind of give a little more that kind of angle, and let's see if that will help. Um, and going up? Yeah. Well, in general, when you when you play the same thing. So you want me to, to play the same thing, but same thing, but oh, now yeah, my hand is doing. Yeah, same thing with the little finger on the hook. With. But um, with yeah. yeah. But press a little more intentionally. And if, if possible, maybe you can kind of tilt the mouth pipe, pipe just a little bit that way. Just a little bit. How was that? Good. It didn't take effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that is an example where the way you feel is one hundred percent correct. That it felt easier to play without the little finger. That that was the truth, but the reasoning was. Exactly the um, opposite. You thought it was because you applied less pressure, 
but the fact was probably we're applying more pressure. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So um, observing what's going on and the reasoning what's going on are two different processes. And um, I had a very hard time around that when I was in school. <laughs> yeah. Because often the reason, often the observations that musicians make are very, um, very detailed and uh, correct. But often the reasoning is not correct. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be interesting if you start to kind of extract only the fact. Are you hearing me okay? Um, the last sentence you say, I didn't hear it very well. Okay. It might be interesting if you start extracting only the facts. Okay. And that takes training because um, here the fact what well, the only fact we can agree on is that you were having a easier time playing high without the fin uh, little finger. And the reason of that is still not very clear. I think I observed the difference I told you earlier. Okay. And the only way to check that was by doing that experiment. And that experiment still doesn't really prove my thinking. It only shows that um, applying intentional pressure seems useful at least to some extent. Yes. Yeah. No. What, what the reason I said that is because um, I've been playing without that finger intentionally for for some time, for maybe a week. And uh -huh. I have noticed that my resistance, I can play with, when I play usually with my finger, I can play like three hours top. Yeah. But this week I've been playing like three and a half, four easily. <laughs> Building up. Yeah, and so I think there is something to it. There yeah. Must be yeah. Um, yeah. One one thing might be that um, because you've been at, at home for months, you've been able to um, practice very regularly um, in your own timing, probably. So you might have built up a lot of strength in the last few months. There, there might be, um, which is a good thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and the other thing that's likely is um, that maybe, maybe the angle, maybe that's what is really helping. That's a possibility. That's possible. Um, can I see your ambusher from very close? Yeah. Um. Okay. Let me figure out how to have this up. Oh, wait. Okay. It's not visible here. Um, let me try to move. Sure.
It should be That's smoother. Good. That's good, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a little uncomfortable. Let me put this. And you can play the same thing. Okay. Did you have your finger on or off? On. Can you do it off? Um, now, with your finger, yeah. try, let's try the same thing again. Kind of tilt your mouthpiece a little that way on purpose. Mm. See, just now you got up to the, um, what was that? That was an A, right? Yeah. Yeah. The last time, the, the beginning note, you were not pressing so much. Yeah. Okay. But as you went on playing, da, 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 do, do, from that part, you started to actually actually push the mouthpiece a little more towards your um, mouth. Yeah. And then, and then at the same time, you used more probably muscle tone in your torso. Mm -hmm. So you were a little more upright. But well, I should say you, you started to kind of move you started to change the shape of your um, torso as you started yes. to apply more pressure. I can remember doing that. Yeah. That's definitely a good thing. It, it looks better as a movement and it sounds better. So can you replicate that at the very beginning? Um. What do you mean by, about with at the very beginning, like oh. doing that from the start? Yeah, doing that from the first now. How did that feel? Um, it felt more like a, a curve. A, talking about the phrasing, it felt more connected. I felt it that way. Did it generally feel better? Um, sometimes. More, most of the time it felt better. Um, maybe I'm not used to it. Okay. Um, let's try warming up your arms. Have you, have you, have you done that before? Maybe not. Warm up how? Warming up your, the arms? Not really, right? Never. No. No. Okay. Um, so can you, can you hold your horn like this? The bell sideways? You hold like that. Yeah, it, and where is your right hand? In the bell. Take it out of the bell, and can you grab the pipe? No, not the bell, the pipe. Oh, the pipe. Yeah, exactly, and a little lower. Uh, the, the, your right hand a bit lower. Okay. And then, and then uh, move the horn out upwards like that. Should I stand up? And you can remain sitting. 
further up, all the way up. Yeah, and can you extend your elbows? Good, yeah. Bring that, bring that down. Extend your arm upwards. And can you do that three more times? Yeah. And then without, okay, stop there. Uh, okay, one, once more, once more. And then go into your playing position from there. From here? Yeah, from there. Yeah. yeah. Of course you can move your, yeah. And then, and then try playing, yeah. Yeah. Again, you started to move differently in the middle of the phrase, and then that's when things started to work better. So it seems like there's something about starting a note. <laughs> hmm. Um. Can you play an F, so a half note below the note you were playing just now? Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And then F sharp. Yeah. How, how did that feel good just now? Yes, at the beginning it yeah. did. It did, yeah. What was different about that that um, production tone production? compared to the ones you've been doing with um, Ravel? Well, um, there's some movement I do, like... Yeah. I, I created... I did those movements in order to, to overcome the Valsalva maneuver when I had it. Like, I thought to myself, just breathe and shoot. Breathe and shoot, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And... It led me to do this, this movement, and yeah. But it's it is easy to think about it when I'm doing one note alone. Yeah, but it's harder to think about it in in a long phrase. Mm -hmm. And it is easier when I do like two more articulation, harder yeah. when I. Yeah. Let's experiment kind of thinking that movement in a different place of your body. So now it was like kind of around here, right? Like, yeah. Head and torso. That movement of getting the air out or kind of shooting. Yeah, you call it to shoot the air. Can you think of shooting the air from your tummy? Like that? Okay. Yeah, very clear. And in the context of Ravel. Oof. I think you're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. 
how what, what was that like? Um, the beginning of the note felt better, mm -hmm. um, but the 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 slur between yeah. the yeah the slur felt felt harder to do that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I I suspect you were th that kind of that sort of air pressure you created from your tummy from your abs. You were using that when the slur came. Before you were using that from when the slur came and you weren't using it at the beginning of the note. Now what happened was that you used it at the beginning and you didn't add any when the slur came. So maybe you can do it again um, when the slur comes. Ah, good, good, good. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's sounding good. Um, it did feel better in that sense, but it I felt I feel like I rushed it. I I felt like ooh, I have to I have to press now. Yeah. Yeah. Just now, the F sharp was a little sharp, but um, that was because you had more energy than you thought. And then the A didn't go sharp. You were, you, you were tending to go sharp up to now, but just now you were pretty right in the middle, maybe just a little bit flat, which shows that you were not... Um, Tightening your lips. Yeah. Um, you mean tightening my lips um, in all the excerpt or for just the, the... The A. The A. Yeah. Okay. Did you notice that it was a little more flat than usual? Yes, I did notice it was flat. I didn't know the... Didn't know the, the cost. It, we are saying that it was a little flat, but it did sound pretty thick, didn't it? Thick and fat. Yes. Yeah. It sounds yeah. bigger than the other. Bigger. Yeah. 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 But that means that there is more aperture. Yeah. So, it, it, which means that you were kind of relying a little more on lip pressure. Okay. So, um, so now you you use your ab, abs in order to create that um, air shoot at the beginning, and then you did it again intentionally when you were going up to the A. What was that experience like? Is there anything um, troubling or worrying about it? Yeah, um, I felt like it almost went a little bit up the, from the... The, okay. the A, yeah. That's a good problem. Then then transpose it a note higher. Can you do that right away? Yeah. 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 So start from a um, G sharp. Okay. G sharp? So G sharp. Starting D. from a G sharp. G, from a G sharp. But really shooting the air from your abs. Well, that's doing well. Yeah. It was hard to get to the to the B. Um use more app. More? Use more apps. Oh, yeah. Really, really shoot it up. Okay. 
just now you used a little bit too much of your hamburger. Okay. Yeah. The, mm. But I think you're strong enough to really do it much more with your ear. Yes, mm. I think that too. Yeah. Let's practice um, only that bit. Naughty. So now enough air, but too much lips. So you overshoot it. Good. Good. Yeah, nice. Again, see um, that B natural, that B was a little flat. But that's probably, probably some tendency of your horn, your mouthpiece, I bet. The intonation is a little flat, but the sound is good. Is that a pretty old Halton that you're using? No, not that old. Maybe 10 years old. 10 years. Okay, so it's not really built in that big, dark. Could it be my hand? Maybe. Maybe. It's, I mean, it's sounding good. Maybe it's just my ears used to more of the European style. Oh, okay, could be. Yeah. So maybe a violinist won't mind at all. Mm -hmm. I wonder what kind of what kind of sound you're really going after. I like I love love the Czech sound in general. The Czech sound. Ah, the Czech sound. sound. Czech sound. Czech sound. The Babarak. Uh, all of them. They are sharp all the time. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, no. yeah, I like their sound. I don't know. Yeah, I nice. haven't really tried to to listen to their intonation. Uh, well, in general. Um, um, those old guys have a very distinct way of playing. Yes, they do. So, um, their intonation, articulation, phrasing will be very different from um, anyone does now. Yeah, but not just them. Maybe Radic is Radic, one yeah. of my. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I love Czech horn playing too. Yeah, I'm not trying to criticize them. I'm just saying that because um, if you are going to kind of imitate or <laughs> copy them, you, you might not get the kind of result you're really um, imagining because of your horn, your mouthpiece. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure. I'm, I'm clear about that. I know that. Right. Um, so how are things feeling so far? Better. A lot better. This last time was much better. Oh, with the, the B. Yeah. yeah. So we started off kind of talking about tension in this area and then that conversation about having your little finger on the hook or not yeah and then but it seems like the main conversation of this lesson is again um, learning to really build up air pressure using your strong muscles especially in the app apps yeah um so kind of following that context i haven't really answered your original question or okay. the thing you were talking about you know the the tension in this area so i'm kind of wondering yeah maybe how... maybe it's not happening now but many times i do feel like when i play the high register i just start up slowly building this all of this up and all of well, you said this is normal, but um, I don't really notice it until someone tells me you're using too much muscles of your body, which are not necessary. Hmm. I think that comment is an example of, again, of a musician feeling and observing something pretty correctly. 
but putting that into a pretty incorrect logic or, or words. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So. Hmm. Can you describe what exactly you are feeling or what you are noticing? Okay, let me wait a minute. Um, running out of batteries, so let me. Oh, turn okay. My phone. Sure. Is worse here, but this is yeah. where the charger can be. Okay, what I feel when I um, what I feel is I do feel like I'm using all those muscles, and then when they when someone tells me to play without them, it does feel lighter. It does feel mm -hmm. better, as I tell you. But yeah, I, I still see. don't know the reason. Okay. Okay. Um, can you play Mozart two or four? The phrase that goes up to the um, B flat. Yeah. Just that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that one. Wow, you're sounding much better compared to a month or six weeks six weeks ago, yeah. maybe. Wow. Yeah. I've been thinking more than playing the last weeks. Uh-huh. Well, you're sounding much better. <laughs> um did you feel anything kind of less than perfect around here? Yeah, the a couple crack notes and what I did feel the high B yeah. the, the B flat was flat. A uh -huh. little bit. A little bit, yeah. And yeah. Um <clears throat> one small experiment. I think now you're not moving your horn very much. When you, when you um, make your initial setup, you, you're not moving your arms very much, and you're not moving your neck so much. What you're doing is you're kind of leaning forward to bring your mouth, your mouth towards the mouthpiece, kind of like that. Yeah. So let's experiment with kind of um, allocating that movement to two different kind of movements. One is moving your horn with your arms a little more towards your mouth. And the other is tilting your neck a little more. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what that will do. First. The hands. Yeah, the arms. The arms, yeah. Arms, and then, yeah, and tilt your neck a little more as you bring your mouthpiece. Both things at the same time. Yeah, kind of, yeah, both, same time, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's practice moving your, moving your head at the neck. Okay, move it around. Okay, um, rather than kind of moving it in circles, let's move it in each direction, forward, right, 
to the left, and then backwards. So forward, to the right, to the left, and then backwards. Yeah, that's the, the movement of your neck. And move it forward when you move your mouthpiece towards your mouth. Okay. Yeah, good. Play. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I started to think about it. Yeah. Um, how did that feel around in this area? Did it make any change? Yeah, it was intense. Mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, I feel like it didn't pop up as, as much. Mm -hmm. The play was harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would kind of made it too complicating, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, so I suspect it's, it's something about the way you hold your horn that's creating some sort of tension in this area and that pe people, that makes people want to kind of give you an advice to relax. I think it's more in the area of the way you hold, hold the horn than your kind of sound production technique. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't quite spotted what exactly is going on. Probably we will sooner or later. Um, can I see you playing standing? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And you can, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see. Okay. Do you notice that you're, you're mo you, you have your right arm behind you? Yeah. Yes. yes. Does it have to be there? No, it doesn't. Let's let's try getting that in front of you. You might have to um, look, move your face towards the left in order to do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. <laughs> And then um, for the high notes, really use more abs. Yeah, and then I think we'll start to feel very different. Last time you played, you had your right arm back in your usual position. Oh, didn't notice. Yeah. And then bring it back to your usual position, compare the two. Yeah. 
does it free up this area? What? That, does it make any difference in this area? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. I don't feel tension. Like, I, when I usually do it, I feel tension after playing too. Yeah. And kind of judging by the sound, it seems like when this area gets more free, the sound opens up it vibrates better, but you inevitably you need a little more air pressure because you probably there was some pressure created in this in this area because of the way you were holding the horn. And if you change that, you lose that much pressure in this area, which mm -hmm. you need to um, complement with yeah. some other part. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if if one needs to, if someone moves his or her arm forward with the French horn, because the mouthpiece is on the left side, then you need to move your face towards the mouthpiece then you can get a vertical movement of the horn. What you were doing was more of a twist. Yes. Bring, bringing the mouthpiece towards your center by twisting your right arm backwards. Mm -hmm. That's one way of holding the horn. But the one, the last one I um, proposed was twisting your neck just a little bit towards the left and then you will have both your arms in front of your body and then you can do you can hold the horn with a vertical movement yes yeah that's the difference okay and we i'm not sure if we can conclude anything today but I'm pretty sure whatever people notice about you and any sort of tension you you notice yourself is pretty much related to the way you're holding your horn. Well, I never thought about it, actually. Yeah. Um, so even if you kept playing with your usual way of holding the horn, horn, engaging your abs the way you learn today will make things much easier so in that sense it's still okay to forget about the last part we talked about today the way about how you hold the horn yeah but um if it's interesting enough and if it's not too confusing you can start experimenting with the idea of bringing your arms or kind of you having your arms in front of you rather than behind you. Okay. But yeah. we haven't really kind of got the mystery. So <laughs> if it feels too complicating, it feels strange, um, feel, uh, feel safe to forget about it. Okay. Um, maybe I could try once more. Um, sure. The position you told me, thinking about the apps, and the ear a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Might be the. I think it does a big change. Yeah. Do Do you know that Radek plays all that without any slurs? Did you yeah. notice that? Maybe you yeah. can try that. Yeah, I've tried it. Um. <laughs> um. 
but yeah, but just a little slower so that you can um, push your abs almost every time for every single note. Especially the last three notes, push your abs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. With with the new hand, well, with the new arm position. Yeah, I think what I noticed was that um, the last two or three notes of each e each time you go up the ladder, yeah. probably you stopped. Yeah, you stopped pushing the air out a little bit. You kind of kind of backed off a little. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's true that often, yeah, some players who are, who really have mastered the entire horn technique can play like that by, by backing off. <laughs> but in that case, they're usually playing the whole thing more or less in mezzo piano or piano. Mm. Think, yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we are about time. And 23rd, in two, I'm, um, yeah, wait a minute, 20 seconds. Yeah, in two weeks, I'm actually not here. So should we do it in a week or three weeks? Either way you want it. In a week. In a week, okay. Then um, talk to you same time in a week. Okay, sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. See you. Bye bye.